Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Being a music producer is one of the most rewarding careers or hobbies, but it can get sometimes a little overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out. So then today I wanna to share with you three things that I wish I knew when I started to produce so that you can make the most out of this craft. Okay, so let's start off by ripping off the Band-Aid. The first thing that I wish I knew or realized when I started to produce is that motivation is a myth. A lot of times as creative individuals, we wait until we find that inspiration for us to start creating. Now, at the surface level, this sounds right. We are creative minds. We take external stimuli and experiences and we convert them into forms of art. So it makes sense that we wait until inspiration hits so that we can grab it and start to work, right? Wrong. If there is anything that I've learned over my last 10 plus years of making and playing music is that creativity is in fact a muscle that you have to keep working out. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be a robot. We all have our ups and downs and we definitely need to rest. But what I am saying is that if you only wait to work until you're inspired, then chances are you're not going to be creating a whole lot. I know this perspective may sound a little out of the ordinary, but consider this. How many times have you dreaded doing something only to find yourself being fine once you got started? The best example that I can think of for me is the gym. I absolutely dread the process of getting myself to the gym, but once I get there and the endorphins start rolling, then I'm fine, everything's good. The same principle applies to music production. Yes, there will be huge moments of inspiration and you should definitely act upon them, but what I'm saying is that we need to make it a habit to show up every day and put in those reps. If you get there and you don't come up with something, that's totally fine, it happens, but at least you try. Chances are though, and I say this because I've been there, once you get there, you'll start to slowly fall into flow, you'll start creating and everything will be fine, but you would have never gotten to that point if you never decided to make that decision in the first place. Now, I do wanna point out here that the intention, at least for me, is never to finish a whole beat, although if you can do that, then that's even better. The goal is just to get into the habit of creation. If in the beginning you can only come up with a chord progression, that's totally okay. The more you do it, the better and the faster you will eventually become. Now, all of this sounds great in theory, but if you're still having trouble getting started or just getting there, then what I would recommend are two things. Number one, taking the path of least resistance. And number two, using a timer. If you live a busy day or have multiple responsibilities, then it might be hard to set aside some time to create. So in that case, I would focus on reducing some of the friction between you and what you want to accomplish. Maybe carry around a small MIDI keyboard in your laptop so it becomes really effortless to get going when you have some downtime. Once you sit down, if you do need a little bit of an extra push or help, then I would say use a timer. A timer can be a really powerful tool because it serves almost like a contract with yourself. Set a timer for a certain amount of minutes and then make a deal with yourself that even if you don't feel like it, you're going to commit, at least for the duration of that time, to create. If nothing happens in that a lot of time, then no worries, you can give yourself the permission to either move on to another idea or just leave completely, but at least you tried. As mentioned before though, chances are that once you get started, you'll find your footing and you'll want to keep going. A timer also helps if you're short on time and you need to make the most out of it. So again, if you leave here today with nothing else, then remember that motivation is a myth. Discipline, on the other hand, is quite real. The next thing that I wish I knew when I started to produce is that practice and feedback are the only real ways to get better. Now listen, I know that we are knee deep into the content culture and YouTube is filled with plenty of videos and tutorials on how to be a better producer, much like this one. But trust me when I tell you that the only thing that's going to push you forward is actually doing the work and getting some constructive criticism. Now I'm not saying that watching tutorials is a waste of time, of course not. But what I am saying is that as you watch and learn, you should also be putting those techniques into effect in your own projects. This blends perfectly with the last tip because if you purposefully set time to produce, then you're going to have this opportunity frequently. Music production is a fantastic craft, but often what I see with new music producers is that one, they either get stuck on the learning phase because they think that they have to absorb all the information they can, but as a result, never actually put anything into practice, or two, they end up getting caught in the fear of not being good enough or being judged, and they mask that insecurity by hiding behind another tutorial so that they never actually have to do the work. Again, there are plenty of resources out there, much like with this channel, and I definitely encourage you to take advantage, but don't forget that the only way to make yourself better is to sit down, do the work, and then let others listen so that they can give you feedback. Speaking of feedback, the last thing that I wish I knew when I started to produce is that music 
is wasted just sitting on a hard drive. As mentioned earlier, a big part of getting better at production involves letting others hear your work and give you constructive criticism. This is important because often we are sitting behind the computer listening to our work for hours and hours on end, and it can become really easy to lose perspective. Letting someone in can give you a fresh pair of ears and allow you to discover different things that you might have missed or could have done better. Now, when it comes to feedback, I basically narrow it down to two types, professional and casual. I consider professional feedback to be from anyone who is also in your field and has more experience than you. This type of feedback can give you some really great technical advice on how to improve and it is essential to keep progressing. My favorite kind of feedback, however, is the casual type. And this is a feedback that comes from people who know nothing about music production. To the casual listener, EQ curves and compression ratios mean nothing. To them, it's either yes, this sounds good or no, this needs some work. Casual feedback is a really great way to get some quick impressions and to let you know how well you're doing. Even if you're just doing this as a hobby or have no intention of making this a full-time career, remember that at the end of the day, you are making art, and I would argue that you are doing the world a disservice by not sharing it. Art is meant to be shared, so don't forget to put out your music. So then let's summarize. We agreed that motivation is a myth, and to get better, you need to develop discipline to set aside some time and practice your skills. Once you have something that you are proud of, then you need to get some feedback, and to get feedback, you need to put out your music. So finally, how do you do that? Luckily, there's no shortage of solutions in 2022, and one of my favorite ways is to create little short beat videos that you can share on a platform platforms like TikTok and Instagram. You can get really crazy and make them all cinematic, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. Find something that you're comfortable with and something that you can commit to consistently and just share your work. Now, sharing your music to social media platforms is a fantastic strategy. However, once you start to get a little bit more comfortable, then you might want to make your music a little bit more accessible and even make some money from it. For that, I recommend you post your music to streaming platforms like Tidal, Spotify, and Apple Music. And the way you do that is through a music distributor, much like DistroKid, the sponsor for this video. DistroKid is a digital distributor and for $20 a year, it is by far the easiest and most affordable way to release your music to all streaming platforms. One of my favorite things about DistroKid is how easy they make it to not only distribute your music, but also market it. If we head over to my personal account here, you can see all of the beat EPs that I've released so far. But if we head over to the top right menu, we can drop down this goodies tab and check out some of their marketing tools. There are plenty, but I wanna point your attention to the playlist spotlight tool under the Get Hurt subcategory. This feature is totally free with your subscription and it essentially allows you to have one of your songs featured in one of DistroKid's curated Spotify playlists by getting people to vote on it via a shareable link. When you click on this, you get presented with this page where you can vote for other tracks from different artists and even DM them if you really like their work. As mentioned though, on the top right, you can opt to submit your own music and DistroKid actually has a few Spotify playlists with large followings, so definitely take advantage. If you're interested in reaching more people with your music, then make sure to hit the first link in the description to sign up for DistroKit and get 7% off your first year. But there you have it, friends. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, then don't forget to share it with someone else who might need it. Thank you once again to DistroKit for sponsoring this video. Again, I'll be leaving that link down below in the description so you can get 7% off your first year. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.